Welcome to this second session that Makers Empire is running with us, getting started with Makers Empire. And again, we're joined with the wonderful Mandy, who will take us through the Makers Empire software. Um, we are recording this, so if you'd like to rewatch after, you will be most welcome. Thank you so much, Abigail. I'll just share my screen. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining me this afternoon. Um, I know it's an extremely busy time of term um, with the reports and all of that and getting close to the end. And I know there's a public holiday that's popped into our calendars tomorrow. So I appreciate uh, those of you who were still able to join. Um, and um, let's get started. So I'm Mandy Dimitriadis. I'm the Director of Learning at Makers Empire. And my background is in um, uh, as a school teacher, mostly primary school and special ed. And I've also spent quite a bit of time in museum education and working with the Department for Education. I was on the TEFL team and um, Australian curriculum team. But for seven years, I've been lucky enough to be working with an amazing um, company, Adelaide Company Makers Empire. So in this session, I want to explain what we do and why we do it. And... Um, and also uh, yeah, showcase some of the tools and resources that we have so that you, you know what we do and that you can check out whether it might be suitable for, for your students or your school. We have um, lots of opportunities such as free trials um, that if you're interested to do after this session, I encourage you to do that. So I reckon it's good to keep our microphones off during the session, um, unless you do need to say something and then obviously turn your microphone back on. But please do use that chat function. Abigail will be monitoring that. So if you have any questions or would like to, me to discuss something in particular, or if there's something that's not working, please use the chat function. Um, you don't need your cameras on, but it was nice in the beginning to, to see everybody. So thank you for doing that. And as Abigail said, the session is being recorded just so you know that and also that you know you'll get a recording to look at later. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm meeting with you from Ghana land and pay respect to the ongoing and deep connections that Ghana people have to land and country. And what this image, if you're not familiar with this book, it's one of my favourites at the moment, The First Scientist by Corey Tutt, illustrated by Black Douglas, and it's looking at... Um, our First Nations people as being, having used science for many, many thousands of years and actually being our first astronomers and inventors and scientists. So it's a really interesting book to have a, a look at. So to Makers Empire, what I would like to do is to ex talk about what Makers Empire is and what we're all about. Uh, give you a tour of the different elements of Makers Empire and then delve into some of those specifically. So very quickly looking at how teachers get set up for Makers Empire. Um, we'll have a tour of what we call our maker world, which will be all revealed very soon, and our teacher dashboard. Okay, so why Makers Empire? Well, Makers Empire has been going for about nine years and we're driven by a vision, which I'm actually sure you all share. We want to see every young person empowered to be a creator, an innovator and a problem solver so that they can make their world better. And we really believe that every young person is able to make their world better. So at its heart, Makers Empire is a 3D modelling app so you learn design skills you learn you are able to 3d print you can make things for augmented reality you can do all of that but at, but what we're really aiming for is not necessarily to develop amazing 3d designers but to empower students to use tools like this to become those creators innovators and problem solvers so we set about trying in our way of achieving this vision is to um, use our 3D design software and our learning programs to help develop that creative confidence that we think is really important, design thinking skills and an interest in STEM um, and an, an awareness and interest in STEM and a desire to take it further. So our 
programs, our learning programs and offering is underpinned by design thinking. And I know that most of you will have used design thinking frameworks before. Uh, we uh, love design thinking as a problem solving methodology that enables us to find a problem, solve a problem, and then test the solution once we've come up with it. And at Makers Empire, we use the uh, design thinking framework from the Stanford University because it's the original one and it fits really well with the Australian curriculum. Uh, we've obviously modified our resources based on that model to suit our audience and Makers Empire is really targeted at that, that primary middle school age group. So our resources and our app and our programs are aimed at five to 13 year olds, really. So we're at that primary middle school type age group. So design thinking we see as a fabulous framework for those primary middle school students to to use to learn how to solve problems because it's a great process that steps us through human-centered design and it also helps us to reframe problems as opportunities so rather than giving up and being overwhelmed by something that's not working or a problem or something that could be better it actually design thinking helps us to reposition that and view it as a problem uh, opportunity to come up with a solution um, so that's what we're all about using makers empire to develop those design thinking skills for human-centered design and empowering our students as uh, problem solvers and of course design thinking is a really big part of the curriculum that underpins our design and technologies curriculum right from foundation through to year 10 and beyond and uh, one, one of the things that I really love about our design and tech curriculum is that it's thinking based. It's about creating solutions for preferred futures through thinking, design thinking, computational thinking and systems thinking. So where Makers Empire fits really strongly is in uh, design and technologies, design thinking, particularly the skills and processes strand. So what I'm going to do now is to uh, play a video which gives you a tour of our resources. And for those of you who are able to pay attention and listen closely, uh, there will be a pop quiz at the end. So I'm going to hand over to my colleague Matt in this video to give you a bit of a tour of what we, what we do at Makers Empire. This is Matt from Makers Empire. Yes, I'd like to give you a quick tour of Makers Empire and show you why teachers love it. The first thing to understand about Makers Empire is there are two components. The Makers Empire 3D app, where your students and you can practice creative problem solving and make amazing 3D designs, and the Makers Empire teacher dashboard, where you manage your classes, then assign, find, and assess your students' work, plus loads more. Let's take a quick look at the Makers Empire 3D app. New users arrive in a town square we call Maker World and are prompted to create a simple avatar that's a 3D character of themselves. New users must complete the basic training tutorials to learn the basic controls and gain confidence using the 3D design tools. As a teacher, it is definitely worth completing basic training for yourself. Once you complete basic training, the other areas are unlocked. Perhaps the most important area in Maker World is Challenge Central. Here students can complete curriculum aligned, age appropriate, pre-made challenge courses. These courses follow a project based learning approach and are very kid friendly. Educational videos give context and improve students understanding of design problems. Our fun quiz show tests their knowledge before they move on to pro training. Pro training is a scaffolded learning experience designed to develop students proficiency with Maker Empire 3D's design tools. Finally, students are given an open design challenge where they can combine their newfound skills and knowledge to present original solutions to a problem. Students' progress is synced in the teacher dashboard, making it super easy for teachers to monitor and assess their work. Next, we have Mission Maker, where your students can create design challenges for each other and also revisit the teacher missions that you create for your students via the teacher dashboard. In Maze Mania, students create and compete in 3D mazes. It is a great way to challenge and develop their spatial reasoning skills while testing some simple design constraints. Next door is the competition arena where tens of thousands of students from Makers Empire's global design community come together for our monthly global design competitions. It's a great way to test your skills and share ideas. Lastly, if you or your students ever need some quick creative inspiration, you can visit the daily challenge board for a topical design challenge based on a significant event each day. 
Makers Empire 3D also has a gallery where students can exhibit their work and be inspired by designs from other students all around the world. It is important to note that students can decide to make their work private and teachers can control the size of the audience their students interact with. Students can also create just about anything they want, whenever they want, by visiting the Create tab and choosing from the Shaper or Blocker design editors. Like particular aspects of their design, which is a big help for teachers come assessment time. Students using portable devices like iPads or Android tablets can also see their design in AR, that's augmented reality. The AR tool allows students and teachers to visualize their design in a real world context. You could design a new playground for your school, a fantastic hybrid animal in a local park, a habitat for an alien planet. The learning opportunities with AR are just about limitless. So that's a very quick overview of the Makers Empire 3D app. Let's have a look at the teacher dashboard now. To navigate the teacher's dashboard, use the menu on the left. New teachers can follow the Getting Started section for help setting up their class lists and tips for running their first class. It can take as little as 15 minutes to get everything set up. And if you have any trouble, you can contact Makers Empire via the Help button. One of the most important sections of the teacher's dashboard for any teacher is of course class management. Here you can find your class lists and all your students. You can quickly take care of all your basic admin like adding, moving and archiving students and control what content your students access in Maker World. Teachers can also award tokens anytime to reward good behaviour and good work. Use your power wisely. As I briefly mentioned during the app overview, you can choose a challenge course for your students to complete. Each challenge course is curriculum aligned and addresses key design and technologies, also known as engineering design learning outcomes. You can monitor and assess your students' progress through the challenge courses using the challenge report tool. This tool makes it really easy to see which students are excelling and which need more support, and it makes assessment super easy. You can also quickly find anything your students have created using the view and assess tool. The filters make it easy to find exactly what you're looking for. Click on the design to take a closer look and leave feedback for your student. Or you can assess teacher missions, download designs, delete work and even order 3D prints with just a few clicks. Maker's Empire is a powerful way to engage with your students and challenge their creative problem solving. The kids really love it and it makes it super easy for teachers to confidently cover the design and technologies curriculum. The best way to learn is just to have a go. You'll quickly get the hang of it, but if you do ever get stuck, you can search the help articles or get in touch with the friendly Makers Empire team. Bye. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so I thought we'd go straight to Matt and play his video because he says it better than I can, uh, but I am going to delve into some of those aspects in, in more detail very soon. But just to, just to see whether you were listening, um, I have some quiz, quiz questions and if you would like to participate, let's um, use the chat tool or I'm very happy for you to, you to turn on your microphone and shout out the answer. So the first question is, Maker's Empire is split into two components. What are they? Have we got anybody in the chat, Abigail? Not yet. Okay, that's Everyone's okay. Everyone's too shy, I think. Yeah, perhaps we can play along at home and I'll give you a few seconds to answer. Oh, so Maker's Empire is, is that okay? Yeah, oh, yeah. someone's got their hand up, so oh, Sharon. Oh, Sharon, what are the two components of Maker's Empire? Sorry, I didn't mean to put my hand up. <laughs> I can probably answer the question. Uh, there's the 3D app and there's the teacher dashboard. Very good. Gold star for you. <laughs> um, what should students do first when they start using the Maker's Empire 3D app? They should complete, make an avatar. 
And one of the reasons that we, as soon as students log in for the first time, they go directly to the avatar builder. And that's quite purposeful on our part that we're wanting the students to get creating straight away. And then most importantly, we're we're sending a message about how to behave in a digital space, that we're not putting ourselves in the app, we're creating this avatar that's going to represent us. So we do that as the very first task. How many areas in Maker World can you remember? Um, you'll notice that Maker's Empire is very game-based. The students move around to the different sections of Maker World with their avatar. And we did visit a number of areas in with Matt in the video, including things like competition arena and the daily challenges and the training lab and challenge central. So I am going to go through those in a minute so we can leave that question for now. Our next question is, what are the two new tools we added for 2022? You may remember Matt showing the AR tool, which we've had a lot of success with. So as well as creating things for 3D printing, anything that a student makes in Maker's Empire can be uh, saved as a file for AR and you can do lots of amazing projects or uh, with the AR function. Some of those were in the video and it's a great way for students to, to um, test their designs in a real world context. So what does the playground equipment look like in the schoolyard, um, for example, um, and as well as lots of lots of fun and creative ways uh, to view your designs in in the in reality. The other new tool that we've implemented this year is our notes function. So this is really interesting uh, for as a way, as an assessment tool, as a way to, for students to explain their learning and their thinking um, with, by adding notes to different areas of their design. They can explain what different sections of their design do. They can explain some of their design uh, decisions that they worked through when they were creating solutions to problems. And they can even create a narrative or um, instructions uh, for, uh, for, um, for others to follow using those notes to note tools. Um, so there are two, two of the new tools that we've added this year. Um, if you wanted to add a student to your class, which section of the Date Teacher dashboard would you use? You would go to Class Management. And true or false, teachers can assign work for their students in Maker's Empire. Perhaps you can use the emojis if you can find them. Is that true or false? It's true. Teachers certainly can assign work, design challenges, design missions, challenge courses to their students through the Maker's Empire dashboard. And the last question, true or false, teachers can send assessments and feedback to their students in Maker's Empire. Is that true or false? That's true too. Through the dashboard, teachers can view their students' work, they can assess in one place, they can send feedback, um, and even assign tokens, which I'll explain in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is to go back into some of our um, areas of our Maker World. So when students are in Maker World, there's a lot of built-in content that makes it easier for teachers to implement this in the classroom. Having said that, Maker's Empire, it can also be used as a free form open create tool. So to do that, we go up to the create tab and we have a choice of different tools for creating in 3D. Shaper, as the name would suggest, is about putting different shapes together, making your own shapes, um, joining shapes, rotating them, cutting them, duplicating them and so on to create new objects. And that's where you can see the note tool and the new AR tool. So that's Shaper. And so it's very much like a beginner's CAD. You can um, give your design a title. You might ask your students to give it a description, explain how it meets certain criteria, for example. And students can give their their designs a value, um, meaning other students can 
unlock a copy of their design with um, tokens. So that's Shaper. We also whoops, have Blocker, which is a little bit like Minecraft. So designing things using a series of blocks. Etc. And students that are uh, familiar and experienced with Minecraft just take off with this, as you can imagine. So that's so that this is where um, teachers can direct students to create anything connected to any curriculum area, any design task or problem solving activity. So it does have that flexible, open ended application. But where I do want to go now is 3D World. So the aim of 3D World is to engage students and motivate them so it feels like they're playing a game, but everything they're doing is based on design and based on design thinking. And this also helps teachers uh, get started and to be able to access a whole lot of content without having to develop it as much themselves. And what we've tried to do here is to mirror some of the successful practice we've seen our teachers implementing over the years and bring that into a, a ready-made version of that great practice. So let me now just go into a few areas with a little bit more detail. So here's my froggy avatar. In um, training can I, that. Can I ask a question? Yes, is please. That, is that app available as a web application or is it only on the iPad or Android? So it's a downloadable app, but it's available on every platform. So if you go to makersempire.com down, uh, forward slash downloads, you can download it there in Windows, uh, Mac, iOS, um, um, at, uh, Android, etc. So it is a downloadable app, but it works on all platforms. Thank you. You're welcome. So in um, the training lab, we have the basic training tutorials where students learn to, to use our basic tools. So you can see there that it works with a range of, um, of functions. So I'm using a touch screen and very simple. The first a task is um, to find the candy. So it feels like you're playing a little game, but you're actually learning to move your camera. Um, you can see that we're equipped for younger students and students with lower literacy levels with a text to speech tool. So anywhere you um, see this little speaker, it will read your the instructions Hooray. for you. You learn it to look around and you found all my candy. <laughs> So um, it's uh, very accessible for, for all students. So that's a at a very basic level, these little tutorials. Most students will whiz through those really quickly. And they can also come back to the training lab at any time. We have pro training, uh, which guides students through making um, some basic uh, designs step by step. And these are a little bit like um, digital Lego or Lego. So if I wanted to make, oh, let me see, I'll make a simple blob, why not? <laughs> so what that does is gives me access to just the shapes that I need to make that project. And they appear on the right hand side. So just like the instructions for a Lego project. And I follow these step by step um, as I'm learning one way that I might make this particular design. So a student can go there at any time and have a practice. And they can also filter these pro training tutorials by the skill or the function that you're learning. So if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to practice the uh, cut tool. So how do I cut shapes out of each other? I would can filter down, I can make the design dinosaur tooth or the mug, which will show me how to do that cutting and cutting um, function. And then the, the other part of the training lab, lab is our video room. And these are not um, following along in real time. They're, they're videos showing how to make a range of different designs, and they're mostly our student ambassadors. So as you can imagine, we come across some amazing designers, <laughs> young designers who use our app, and we invite some of those students to make um, videos explaining how they make some of their amazing designs. And students love this. They love to be inspired by each other. So uh, we have a number of these um, 
a video showing how someone made this cool living room or this tree house or this family moving vehicle. So that's just the training lab. That's where you can go to get ideas and learn how to use the app. I will now um, go across to the competition arena just quickly. Um, and I'd like to point this out to teachers because every month we have a new design competition and it's a global competition. So when your students participate in this, they're part of a global design community. And every month there's a new competition connected to something global. Sometimes it's a fun one like this month, September the 9th was International Teddy Bear Day. Uh, so the challenge was to is to design a, uh, the cuddliest, friendliest, cutest, most loved teddy bears. And every month we get up to about 20,000 entries in these competitions. And you can see here uh, some of our past winners. So sometimes it is a fun one like, like the teddy bear one. Other times we're asking students to solve some kind of problem or show a particular um, the, the, some particular learning. So things like uh, water saving devices, we looked at, at bees, we looked at um, the somewhere around here as chocolate making machines. So that's um, a guaranteed project that your students can work on every month. And as the video said, we have our daily challenges. So these are calendar related and as global as possible. So we're approaching Clean Up the World weekend. And this one is um, to design a tool to help clean up litter in your local area. So you just click start to enter that challenge. And every day there's a new one. Uh, these, the competition and the daily challenges are used by lots of our teachers as homework activities or extension activities or just as a go-to when you need something purposeful for your students to work on. But where uh, this gets really tightly aligned to curriculum is through um, our challenge courses and our teacher missions. So if I go now into Challenge Central, what a student sees here are challenge courses. They will see just the challenge courses that their teacher has assigned to them. And by challenge course, what I mean is a series of activities linked through a, a topic and aligned to cur curriculum. So all of our thing, all of our programs and uh, courses are aligned to the design and technologies curriculum, Australian curriculum, but also integrate other areas. So for example, the one about um, whoops, I've gone out of it. Example, the awesome animals is. A, a, around animal adaptations and biomimicry and that is aligned to year five six science as well as um, uh, the design and tech curriculum so for example if i go into oceans of trash now a lot of our challenge courses are also closely aligned to the un um, goals for sustainable development and you can see there that that it looks like a bit of a course that you follow through with a trail and um oops um, and a series of activities. So the types of activities students work through in a um, challenge course, it's got all that confetti because I've actually finished this one. But if I go into here, there's a little video introducing some of the content. Did you know that 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans? So why are oceans important? Well, if we didn't have oceans, we would have trouble breathing. Over half of the world's oxygen is produced by our... So you get the idea. There's a video that introduces some of the content in this one about why are oceans important. This is followed up by a quiz show where my avatar is actually in a quiz game show um, and answering quiz questions uh, with the quiz host that are based on that video that I just watched. So how much of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans? Well, luckily, the very first sentence in the video told us that that was 70%. So multiple choice, celebrate, get some feedback. If I selected a, an incorrect answer, it would give me a prompt and give me another go. And you can see in the dashboard how many attempts students are taking at these questions. Um, I'm also earning some tokens as I go and answer questions correctly. 
So we have those little interactive quizzes and then we have what the, some of those pro training tutorials that I explained before. So something, uh, one way of designing something related to what we've just looked at in the, in the video content. So this one is step by step, one way we might make a baby turtle. Because these are one of the creatures impacted by ocean pollution. So it steps me what, step by step through making that baby turtle. And then that pattern continues. We go on to um, a video about looking at the problems with ocean pollution. Then we have a quiz and then we're making a, a submarine. Um, and it goes all the way through to the end, designed to take two or three lessons for the students to work through. More if you stop and do some research and other activities outside the app. And then the challenge course finished up with an open-ended design challenge, in this case, ocean inventions. So invent something to help protect our oceans. So something to cl help clean up oceans or something to stop pollution getting in there in the first place. And then this particular challenge course includes a, a pitch. So through a similar format to the quiz show, um, the, the avatar needs to respond to questions like what does your uh, invention do? What does it work? How, what did you, how did you go about making it, etc. And then the, the student will submit that for their teacher to see. So that's what we mean by challenge courses. Every term we're adding at least one new one here. So keep an eye out. Uh, they cover from uh, reception through to year eight and a range of different curriculum areas. And a, a point of interest probably is that although they are aligned to a specific great year level, so Awesome Animals fits in that year five, six science space, it doesn't mean that a year three or year eight student wouldn't be able to work through that and still feel challenged and able and interested. So they're, they're kind of very open-ended, but we have aligned them specifically to curriculum as well. So I'm just going to go into our teacher dashboard for a minute. So here I am in my dashboard. Um, which is it is a web-based. So we've got the two elements of Makers Empire. We have the 3D app, which is a downloadable app, and then we have our dashboard, which is a web-based um, product. And here I can see uh, in a nutshell some of the important parts of the things I need to know. Um, if I go to class management, I can see all of the classes in my school and the ones that are assigned to me. Um, I can add students, um, move students to different classes at the end of the year. I can assign them some of those tokens. Tokens are very sought after, uh, and that's part of that motivation, engagement, game-based learning, um, the, where um, when you have tokens, you can unlock shapes to include in your designs, and you can un unlock other designs as well. Um, the Tokens are earned as students complete challenges and activities, but you can also assign them to students yourself. So um, what I wanted to now show you what it looks like from a teacher's perspective to assign these challenge courses. So I'm in challenge courses and I can see here the suite of them that we have. So as I said, we're adding to these all of the time. They link to different curriculum areas and um, UN Sustainable Development Goals and so on. So here's Oceans of Trash that we were just looking at. If I click on that to get more details, it gives me a bit of an overview. It describes the learning objectives aligned to Australian curriculum. And then over on the right hand side, it gives you a preview of what the students will be doing. So you can see a little preview of the video content um, and the activities that are included. Uh, to help you decide whether this is suitable for um, what you're doing with your students. So then what we do is, whoops, sorry, go back to assign courses. So as I said, when we were in the 3D world, what a student sees in that world in the Challenge Central depends on what their teacher has assigned. So if I'm in my class two, you can see that I have the ability to assign a whole range of, of um, challenge courses to my class and I want them to do Oceans of Trash. So I'm going over 
here and making sure that that one is ticked for my class. I can assign that for my whole class or if for one some reason I only wanted some of the students to have access to that, I can assign different courses to different students. And you can have as many as you like. It just means that these are the ones that will show up in Challenge Central. Once your students start to work through the challenges, you can monitor their progress in one place through our um, through our teacher dashboard. So I select my class, demo class two, and I select my um, challenge course that I want to monitor. So Oceans of Trash. And here I can see where all of my students are up to, and it's a traffic light system. So if I'm seeing green, that means the students are working through these tasks as I as they we expect them to, uh, being successful and completing. You'll see orange if they seem to be a bit stuck or might need some help, and red or red if they seem to be very stuck. So to get to see, whoops, how we are going here, uh, how our students are going, we can click on each of these activities to see what a student was doing. So if I go into Alfie's, um, I can see that he uh, got five out of five, <laughs> and it's actually kind of in reverse to what you would think, um, because it, you can have another go at them. And I, we just went in there and in just then and answered one question. <laughs> uh, so he went down, but the idea <laughs> is if you... Um, didn't do so well you can go back in and you can have another go and your teacher can actually see how you progressed and that you persisted and had another try. The same for some of the other activities, um, the pro training. What you can see here is how accurate the student was and how long it took them. So you can get some comparative data of how they're going with that. Once the student has completed the whole challenge course uh, they and click submit, you could go to the end and you can send some feedback. Uh, so you can um, send some um, encouraging feedback. You can ask some questions. You might, uh, if you could, looks like they've rushed through certain aspects, you might redirect them to have another go. Um, and you can also assess against curriculum. So when you do that, it comes up like this. And the student won't actually see that language above below, satisfactory, etc. This is just for your thinking. So you look at the challenge course as a whole and you think, yeah, they've, they've um, pretty much performed as I would expect them to, uh, so satisfactory. And I can then give them some feedback and assign tokens through there and click send. And that when the student logs into the app next, they will get that feedback as a message from their teacher. So Fair that's... Um, yep. I've got another question. Um, as a teacher, can I export that into Excel, for example, or not? Uh, uh, this, what, what you can see here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a really good question. I, I don't know. I need to find out that. Uh, what you can do, though, is at the end of each um, challenge course, you can download a report, an individual report, which is not answering the question, but it is something that can be then added to a student's uh, portfolio or report. Uh, but that's actually that's actually a really good question and I will find out whether we can add that. Thank you. And I'm sure that we can because we can add, um, create spreadsheets of our class lists and things like that through the dashboard so I'm sure it wouldn't be very hard to add a button to do that. Good question. Okay so just jumping back into our app again um, I talked about Challenge Central and I also said that the other place where students can have work assigned to them is mission control. So this is this where they have to build a rocket <laughs> to start off with and they go in here. Let's whiz through this. So I want to launch and go into Mission Maker. Um, so here, a student can have missions assigned to them. The difference between a mission and the challenge courses that we just looked at is that where those challenge courses are a series of activities designed to be used over several lessons, a mission is a one-off design brief. 
So if you've been doing some kind of um, focus in your lesson, some kind of project or, or topic in your classroom, and you want to bring in some design, then you can assign a mission to your class and they will see it here. So to do that, I'm going back into the dashboard and back to my class management and my teacher missions this time. So we, we have lots of many, many <laughs> um, missions already built into Makers Empire and you can filter them by grade level and see what we've already got there and assign them to your students. So you can make your, you can use what we've already got there. You can also make missions yourself. So let's say it's getting very close to, to wine time. So maybe our mission title is wine glass and our mission brief is to design a, <laughs> I won't write this, but the mission in case it's pops up in some students thing, but the um, the mission is um, to design a, a wine glass that, that you can use in a Teams meeting, but nobody will know you're drinking wine. So let's just say that, design a, I'll put design a glass. I can then choose whether my students are using Shaper or Blocker, and I decide which class I want to assign it to. So demo class two. And then I just launch that mission. And what happens then is the student, next time they log in, they will get a message pop up from their teacher. So Mandy Designs sent you the wine glass mission. I click on that. It explains what I need to do. Obviously, you'd flesh this out as a design brief with some instructions. And then the student can get started designing their wine glass. So I might use that as my vessel part. And I'll just, while I'm doing this, I'll just show a couple of functions of the app. So I'm using that as the cut part of my wine glass. And what I would like to do is to hollow that out. So I've copied the wine, the vessel part, and then I'm just going to adjust the size. You notice I can do that by eye, but I can also turn on precision tools. So if I'm designing something that I need to be specific, very accurate with, I can type in particular um, measurements. But I'm just happy for now for that to be a bit smaller than the red one. And I'm going to put that in there, position it, check that it looks pretty good. And then I'm going to use our cut tool, which is this one that looks like a Venn diagram. And created my wine glass for saving time. It is a stemless glass. <laughs> so then I click finish and the students are prompted to put in a um, title and a description. And you can use that description as part of literacy or part of the design task that asking students to um, explain how their design meets the criteria or something like that. Yeah, it was a reasonable mission. Okay, so once the student has clicked finish, you will be able to see their completed work in um, the dashboard. So I've gone back into the dashboard now and I go over to student work, view and assess. and um, make sure that I've got my class. I want to look at my teacher missions and I want to look at wine glass. And then I click search and I can see just that one because I've, I only just clicked finish, the, the preview is still generating. But that's where I will then go and see that student's work and be able to um, give them feedback, assign tokens and so on. So there are the two ways that you can use Makers Empire to um, directly assign design-based learning for your students. Um, 
And as I said, we're adding to that all the time. While I'm in the dashboard, we also like this to be a place where teachers can access resources. So in that resource tab, we have a lesson library. And these are, this is really a, a depository of ideas. And they're written as lesson plans, but they are ideas that you might want to, to have a look through when you're thinking about how you might use design um, or address the design and tech curriculum. So here we have um, about 150. They've either been written by my team, the learning team, or by teachers in our Makers Empire community. And you can tell um, who's written them by the little logo. So this one, Market Day, has a Makers Empire logo, so that's been written by Makers Empire team. And this one, Australia's Big Things, um, has a community, little people on it. So that's been written by one of our teachers. So it's a great way to share ideas. Um, even if you're not into following lesson plans, you can. it's still a way to see, OK, I'm interested in doing something in science that brings in design. What have others done? So if I was interested in that, let's have a look. I want to look at uh, year six. And I specifically want to look at science. So I can filter it down. And there I can see that there are a range of um, lesson plans that have been written addressing science for year six. And these are then, um, let me have a look, maybe the this one, an emergency light. And it, it's a lesson plan that can be downloaded as a PDF. It explains. Um, a bit of an overview and then step by step. Some of them have links and resources and you can also see where it fits with, with the curriculum by clicking on those links. Mandy, if a teacher wanted to contribute, um, yes. do they just contact Makers Empire or is there um, a way to do that a, from the teacher that's great, that's a great question and we love um, teachers contributing um, because it, it feel, builds up that, that community. And to do that, back over on the resources tab. So I went to resources and I went to uh, lesson builder rather than lesson library. And what this is, is a, a way of creating a lesson. So I click lesson plans. You won't see everyone's here. This is just because I've got an admin view, but you'll just see the ones you've created. So you can create a new lesson plan when the internet keeps up with me. And you can either create it as a single lesson or a series of lessons as a unit plan. Give it a, a title, maybe playground designs. Create lesson. And then it guides you through building the lesson. Um, what what um, curriculum areas does it cover? What year levels? Is it an assessment task or um, introduction or so on? And then give it an overview. You can see in that top section, you can add resources. So you can add videos or documents or templates or things like that. And then once you've set up the, the um, overview of the lesson, you can then start to build it. So you can do task by task. Um, what is the task? Um, what do they need, etc. What will the students be doing? And then the thing that we've found teachers really find useful because it saves a lot of time is adding the curriculum links. So we have um, some of the more common curricula used by our teachers. We're in Australia and is looking at the Australian ones. So it loads up the curriculum in a tree form. So you can go uh, technologies, I'm going into design and technologies. I'm drilling down into years seven and eight and then into uh, the achievement standards and the, all the um, maybe the processes and skills. And then I can add, oops, then I can add um, step which elements of the curriculum I'm addressing. Okay, so then this is getting this is getting to answer that question, Abigail. So once I've created that lesson, I can um, either just keep it myself there, oops, um, by with this licensing, I can just have it as private. So 
some teachers do that. They just want to have their design-based lessons in one place so they can see them or share them with other people in your school. So you can maybe if you're co-designing something um, and then public. So if you were wanting to contribute to our lesson library, you would make this public and then it wouldn't be public straight away. But what you do is you would click lesson plan finished. I would get a message um, saying somebody's submitted a lesson plan. I would review it, maybe ask, uh, maybe um, contact you, discuss it a little bit, um, maybe not, <laughs> and then um, it could be published into that lesson library, which is what I would do with that grey admin bit there. Um, update lesson. So really encourage you to do that. That's a, a good question. Um, and then getting close to the end of time, but the other resources that uh, we have that teachers quite like is the printables. So as I was saying at the beginning of the session, we're, we're very into using design thinking and you can find a bunch of things here like our design thinking poster, which you can download. And we do regularly add resources here. So things like different posters, there are templates for, whoops, where am I? Um, templates for um, working through the design processes. There's a letter that for parents to explain what you're doing, the certificates and so on. So there's a bunch of resources there that you can access. Um, so get, uh, I think they're the main things that, that I, I wanted to share. Um, of course, once your students are creating their designs, some of them you may wish to use for 3D printing, others you may want to use for AR, others it might just be a design-based learning um, activity that stops at the design phase. But if you do want to use these, uh, these digital products, um, like this one for example, um, I can come here and I can download my 3D files. I can order the print. And what that means is Makers Empire has a make shop. So a lot of schools do have their own 3D printers and will do their 3D printing at school. Some schools don't, particularly some of our primary schools. So we can actually do that as a bureau service for you. We do in-house um, printing with the, the one color PLA plastic, but we also outsource to a full colour nylon um, service as well, which is more expensive, but some of our schools use that for special occasions like end of year gifts or um, enterprise projects and things like that. Um, so there are a number of things we can do with these 3D files. Let me just go to download 3D files. And then if I go to my print manager, I can... Um, do a range of things with them. So here are all the files that I've downloaded and I just that I have um, sent here. So I can go here, I can create an SDL file, I can create a, a number of other objects for using these in other VR or AR applications. I can also create a poster with a QR code that can be scanned and used as for AR. And I might just want to download a 2D photograph or screenshot of the design to put in a presentation or a learning portfolio or something. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with, um, with our digital, with our 3D designs. You'll also see here the looks good, caution, et cetera. Um, what that will do is that's our print checker. So it will actually check the, the model and see whether it's printable or not. So are there pieces um, hanging off? Are, are there pieces that look very thin or are not going to print very well? So we do have that in there as well, which you can use before uh, for your own purposes if you're doing the 3D printing. So I think that that apart from any questions people might have, that is one of the main things I wanted to share and um, share with you what we do and encourage you to check it out. If you are interested in um, knowing more, I suggest that you go to makersempire.com 
and you can start a free trial. So our trials go for two months, which we find is a good amount of time to have a play, get your students to do some things and to make a decision on whether you're interested in going further with Maker's Empire. And if you are, um, we have a number of, of packages that include our subscription um, and hardware, so the 3D printers, and we, we have some really good um, discounts discounted rates for Department for Education uh, schools. So that's what Makers Empire is all about. I really thank you for joining me and um, encourage you to start uh, set up a trial if you'd like to check out and learn more. Do we have any questions or things people would like me to, to talk about? Feel free to come off mute if you do have a question or put something in the chat. You see that little message popping up about a managed ah, convert? Excellent. There oh. is one question. So oh, Sharon's yeah. asked, can we export the grade in Maker's Empire to MS Teams? So I think that one probably goes to that export file yeah. question I might have, I might have asked. I'm not sure if you can right. shed any more light, Mandy. So so what was the question? Can I can we export the grade in Maker's Empire oh. to MS Teams? Okay, so I think that does, that is along the same lines as that other question, and I will definitely investigate that. Yeah. Uh, we we do we are aligned to um like you can sync to Google site Google Classroom and those sorts of things. Yeah, so yeah. Microsoft Teams has an assessment component for the education. Mm -hmm version right. so I presume Sharon is wondering yeah. whether that can somehow sync so I'm not I'm not sure Sharon but um Mandy would do a yeah, little bit I of investigating <laughs> <laughs> I will we are constantly working on those um like single sign in and access through other platforms and things like that so I'll take that back to the team I'll ask um uh, and um, put it on the list. <laughs> yeah. You can see there on that on the screen, there's a ex little pop up saying explore a challenge course with a managed pilot. These are also our managed pilots are a new um, thing that we've introduced for schools that are uh, want to do more than just the free trial, but are not sure if they want to commit yet. And the the managed pilots go for a term for a small charge, and they're based on one of those challenge courses. But you get uh, a webinar at the beginning, um, and it's a particular challenge course, um, and a webinar explaining how it all works and and what the challenge course is about. And then every week there's an email with some prompting you and with some advice and support and tips and tricks. And then at the end. Uh, teachers can submit the, the best designs from their classes to go in an online gallery. So that's something that you may be interested in finding more about. Um, this term, we're just finishing up our um, Oceans of Trash one, uh, which we, I showed you before. And next term, our uh, managed pilot is around um, Make a Difference, which is about social enterprise designing and creating things to to help charity but also uh, responsible pr uh, production of products so things like Tom's shoes that create a pair of shoes and then um, donate another for every pair sold somebody gets a pair of shoes <laughs> so that's that sort of concept so Abigail I think that's all from me well, thank you very much again, Mandy. Um, just a reminder, if you didn't catch Mandy's first webinar series, we are running that one again in term four, and the date escapes me at the moment. Um, but I will write information around that in a follow-up email as then. Um, thank you for your time, particularly at this busy end of the term. And uh, we will catch you again sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody.